everyone, I'm Sarah Trevelyan, owner and founder of Sarah Loves to Sew. And I'm here today to show you how to make my beginner sewing box project, the scissor case. So these are the delightful little, I don't know if that's the right way for you, but it says sewing rocks and look at that fabric. Isn't it gorgeous? So we've got quilted cases with these cool woven labels from Sew Anonymous and we've got the zip along the top and inside you can fit your dressmaking scissors, fabric scissors and inside we've got another little case. So this is the um, beautiful pink, um, azalea pink lining, nice cotton from Rose and Hubble and then this is the little cutie. This is for what I call my snippers, but the little sewing scissors that we all need to cut the little threads. So those fit in here and you will be learning how to make these scissors. So I've created this and this tutorial for you. If you sign up to the boxes on sarahlovestosew.com, you'll get everything you need in that to make this. So that's the zips, the fusible fleece, the labels, the fabric, exactly as you see it here today. So let's start. So the first thing that you need to do is to open up the pack and find your paper template. You want to cut out the two shapes first of all. So this is for the larger scissors case and this will be the template that we use to cut out the fusible fleece. So we will be folding the fusible fleece over and cutting two of these but one will be the front and one will be the back so make sure you don't cut out two of the shapes going that way. So the best way to do that is when you fold the fleece over you know you're going to be cutting one with the sticky side for the front and one with a sticky side for the back. So once you've cut out these templates, you can keep these so you can do this pattern again with other fabrics if you so wish. Okay, so once you've cut out those templates, the next thing you're going to do is to get the fusible fleece and fold it in half and this way we know we're going to be cutting out two of each. So lay the biggest one where it fits and then take the smaller one and position it where it will fit as well. So with these we're cutting right along the edge, we're not giving it a seam allowance, these need to be the exact shape. So if you just pin those down and then you're cutting two. You'll be cutting a front and a back out of both of these. So with your fabric scissors, I might just put another pin in that one down there. And that one there. So then you just cut out shapes that you need from this fusible fleece and this will just add a bit of padding for the scissors case and when you do your quilting stitch that will hold this fleece in place even through washers in the machine if you should need to wash the case um, and also it adds a nice decorative look to your cute little sewing bags, scissors bags. So this is what they will look like and you can see the quilting stitches on there. So this one is for the little snippers I like to call them. These are just really handy if you're taking your sewing with you 
on a weekend or whatever. You might do embroidery as well, so these are ideal for the little embroidery scissors. Or if you're going on a nice sewing retreat somewhere, you can take your big dressmaker scissors with you. So we've got those cut out of the fleece. So once you've cut out all your four pieces of fusible fleece, you'll see one side's the bobbly side. That's the side we'll be putting on the back of this. So get your lovely pretty sewing fabric, turn it over and you can see that you can still see where the sewing machines are. So you can see that this is up, this is the top and this is the bottom. And what you need to do is on your piece of fleece, this straight line is the top. So that is how the case will look. So you want to make sure that the sewing machines are facing the right way up. Obviously the sewing machines are on a slight sort of angle, so they don't have to be exactly straight, but you want them the right way up and not having it sort of that way around. So line up the straight edge with the fabric and you can position it um, so that if you want to include a sewing machine sort of in the middle, do that. But what you've got to bear in mind is we need a centimetre around the edge of every one of these. And we're putting it with the bobbly side down and the straight edge along the top somewhere. So um, it doesn't have to be exactly straight like that. You can change it a little bit, but you need to fit all four on the fabric. So with this little one, you might get the scissors and the scissors and the buttons in there. And you need to make sure you've got a good space between each piece of fleece because that's where we will be sewing the seam allowance. So when you've positioned all four, you will also be needing a little strip to cover the zip. So this is this section here and that will just be a small rectangle of three centimetres wide or as wide as the zip. I think it's three, just over the zip um, width and about four centimetres deep, but you can keep that from any of the off cuts. Just make sure you've got enough three by four somewhere, so don't throw those away. Once you've positioned the fleece where you want them, you're now going to take them to the ironing board. So once you're happy with where your pieces are, just temporarily pin them in place until we take them over to the ironing mat or ironing board. And we'll turn this piece over to iron them on in place. So just put the fabric down and then when it's in place, just take away the pins and then with your iron on, mine's on number two, you should just then be able to press that in place and do this with all four pieces of fleece. Once you've ironed the fleece onto your sewing machine fabric, it might be easier to then sort of snip the two separates. So you've got the big ones on one and the little ones on the other, because we're now going to quilt lines along here. So in whatever pattern you want, you can do diagonal lines, you could do hatchings. Um, so to do this, I get an inch ruler. Um, I use this one, which is just really handy. And I'm going to do them so that they appear not directly down, but I don't know if you can see that sort of diagonally across. So I just take my ruler and choose an angle that I'm going to um, go from that edge to that edge. And then with the fabric pen, I'm just going to mark along on the inches like so. There we go. 
and I will do the same on the other one. So from that edge down to there. And this will just be a guide for my quilting. So you can basically quilt like this. And I'm just going to move the ruler up so I can get a few more points on. Um, with a normal presser foot on your machine, if you've got a walking foot, you could pop this on. Uh, it will just stop it sort of bunching up. But I think my normal foot's going to be fine. So I'm just going to use those as a guide to put a few more marks. And then I draw lines along here. And then I can just stitch along these lines. So when you finish drawing the lines, that's what it will look like. Um, if you want to do a different pattern, obviously you can do inches the other way as well to get cross hatching. But I'm going to do the diagonal lines like this. Okay, so now you take this to the sewing machine using the cotton that you've got in the kit. Put some of this onto the bobbin and then you're ready to go. So I'm now just going to quilt the lines on a two and a half um, size stitch, straight stitch. And I normally go back a few stitches first to secure it in place and then just follow the line all the way to the end, do a few reverse stitches back. And then instead of pulling the fabric away and starting again, you can just give yourself a bit of slack there and go down and quilt the next one. So again, I'll just secure it. And just work your way around the lines until you've quilted all of them and then we'll go on to the next step. So this is what it looks like after I've zigzagged um, up and down, sorry, with straight stitch. So I'm just going to snip all the loose threads and then we can move on to the next step. So you need to do the same marks and measurements on the little one and take that to the sewing machine and do exactly the same by quilting it. So once you've quilted both sets of fleece, you then need to put right sides together of the sewing fabric with the lining fabric. So you can see there's not much difference with the lining fabric, um, but whichever side you prefer to be on the outside. And then make sure that you've still got the centimetre edge all the way around. So line up those edges. And now we're going to cut out the fleeces, but you're going to leave about a one centimetre edge all the way around the fabric. So if you want to be quite precise, you could just measure a centimetre and mark it at different spots around the fleece. So you know that you're going to get the right measurement there. So cut all the way around both, all four fleeces. Okay, so once you've cut out all the fleece bits with the lining on the back there, you need to get some scraps from your sewing fabric. And if you use this lovely little label that's going to be on both of the cases, sewing rocks and the sewing machine on the other side, we're going to use this as a guide. So using the fabric, we need two of these for each zip, so one for each zip. So if you just use that as a guide to see that you can get two of these out. So basically we'll be need, we need two three centimetres by three and a half centimetre shapes. So I find that the easiest way to do that is just to put dots on each corner and then you can use that as a bit of a template and just double check it if you want with your ruler. So what you're going to do is cut that out, which will give you 
this little rectangle. And then for both zips, we will be folding it in half and pressing it either on the iron or with your nail and then opening it out and putting the edges into the middle and press both edges and then that will be closed over and that will become this. So it just tidies the end of the zips up. So you need two of those because you'll be having your two zips. So with these zips, these are longer than we need. So instead of having this sort of slightly ugly bit showing on the bag, we're going to snip off the zips so they're shorter and then sew this bit over the edge. So first thing that we need to do is to measure 28 centimetres on the long zip and cut at 28 centimetres. And on the shorter zip, we need to measure from the end here to 17 centimetres and then snip and then we're going to sew these onto the ends. So we're just going to measure 17 centimetres on that one and just snip off the end. And this one, just put that aside carefully. This one is 20, needs to be 28 centimetres. will fold, place the zip into that section there and then pin it and sew it on the machine just by sewing straight stitch on all four sides and we'll do the same with that one. Once you've folded the little ends you then just sew them on to the ends of both zips, like so. Things that you're going to need to do are to get your lovely labels and we are going to fix them onto our fronts. So you can choose which way you want the sewing case to be and which way where you want either the sewing machine or sewing rocks so I'm going to keep mine like this so I'm going to take this piece as the front and this piece as the front and I'm going to do them all the same so fold down that's going to be on there like that and that one out there so that these will all be facing the same way and what you do is you just pin those in place and then just sew along the line there to keep them just to get them attached so we're just pinning our lovely labels lining up the raw edges and when you sew just sew about quarter of a centimetre because then when you take your half centimetre seam allowance this stitching will be inside so go to the machine and sew those with straight stitch and that we're going to do is get a piece of the lining and the zip and you're going to place the zip so the corresponding zip with a right size lining with the right side up and you're going to put the zip end a centimetre away from the edge. Don't worry if this end runs on a bit, we're going to open the zip to about there just so we can get our hand in. And then I want you to clip that into position or pin it into position. And on this side, about a centimetre from the edge here, we're just going to flip that zip up there and just pin that with a zip lined up with the top line 
like so. And then you're going to place the quilted top piece on top and you're going to line it up and then pin all three layers lined up in that right place together. The zip at the top there. And for this part on the sewing machine, you're going to need a zipper foot. So that should come with your machine. If not, you can buy universal zipper foots. The one that I've got on my Janome just clips on and off. It's really quick and easy to change. And it just allows you to sew a straight line with the fabric being pressed down and it not getting in the way of the zip. So now we're going to sew a straight line, starting from the top, go back and sew along the zip. Change the zipper foot. That's the normal presser foot, just comes off when I press the lever at the back. And this is the zipper foot here. So I'm going to be sewing this way. So I need it to press the foot down on the right, press the fabric down on the right, but avoiding the zip there. So I'm going to clip it on that one. Just bring the threads to the back and then holding everything in place. I'm just going to bring that down and put the foot where you can feel it against the zip and we're going to go back and then forwards just seeing actually these zip, these pins are in the wrong way so I'm just going to reposition those so when I start sewing it'll be easy to remove so I'm going to go back just where the fleece meets the fabric. Now this bit's going around the actual zip here. So instead of it bulging out, I'm just going to move the little zipper. If I can get my hand in there and take it past, if I can. I'm just going to press that up. I'm going to open the zip a little bit more so that it won't be a big bump. I've just got to check that this is folded up about a centimetre from the edge there. And hold that firmly. There we go. And then just take that off the machine. And then you should have. Quite a neat zip starts to be sewn in there. So once you've sewn along the zip there, attaching all three layers together, just flip the lining over and then you want to press that down. And then 
flip it over that side and just give that a press as well. I'm going to do exactly the same as that with the other little bag. So get it in the right way that you want to and I'm going to lie the zip on the top. with this centimetre from the edge but lined up at the top I'm going to open the zip get my hand in and we're going to do turn go to centimeter away there and then we get the top piece and lie that right sides together over the top to line that up with the curl at the end of the fold and then pin all three layers together And then we're going to sew along that just like we did with the other one with a zipper foot on and then open that one out and press along the zip and on the other side making sure the lining is nice and flat So the next step is to take the other pieces of lining and match them up with the correct sizes and we're going to place them on top matching the zip as close as we can. So we're going to leave about a centimetre at this end again and line up the top of the zip with the top edge with the curl the fold about a centimeter from that side and then we want to place the other side on top so you've got right sides together and make sure that the label that we sewed on earlier is on the inside so we're going to sew this on, lining it up with the top edge and with the lining and then pin that in place.
through all three layers. And then just make sure it's all lined up more so down this edge. So once you've pinned this one, do the same with the other side, the other case. So it's lining down first. Match the zip. So about a centimetre away from the edge again, like that. And then the other one on top with the label flat down. And then you're going to pin all these three layers together. And this will be sewing on the other side and the lining for the other side of the zip. So once you pin these, take them to the machine and do exactly the same. Don't forget you want to curl this at the end as well. I tend to always just double check this before I sew when I get to the end because it can get quite fiddly. So you can always just stop before you get to the end and refold it. Okay, so you're going to be sewing down here on both of those. This time I'm sewing with the presser foot on this side of it because the zip, I'm starting at this end and the zip's on the left now. So you just do the same, go back to the start with a few reverse stitches, just get those stray ones out of the way, and then Feel where the zip is. And then just very slowly sew along, taking up your pins as you go. When you come to the bump of the zip, I try and move it away from my sewing. So I'll put the needle in, put the foot up, take the pin out, and just get in there and grab the zip very carefully without breaking the needle just sip it past to where you've already stitched and then line it up again the smaller one of these is a little bit fiddlier so we just have to readjust it as you go and don't forget when you're coming to the end you're going to do that fold so about a centimetre away, do that and fold it up like so. And that's it. Take it to the ironing board and we'll press this side as well. Okay so once you've sewn both sides just snip away the threads, tidy it up a bit Oh look, that's all got caught under there. Just try and snip that away, snip those away, and then open it up so you've got the linings open. Just zip it, make it a bit easier. And then you want to press it away. and the lining like we did the other side 
There you go, you've got that zip in. And then we'll do the same with the other one. Just trim your threads. And you can see it's starting to take shape now. So I'm just going to get that lining out of the way and I need to press it down. And on the other side as well. Okay, we've sewn the zips in. Next thing to do is to bring the outsides together and the linings together. And then you want to just check the labels lying flat and line up the seams. And then we're going to start just pinning these together. Before we do this, it's important to open the zip up. So we're going to pin long here and we'll be sewing these edges together. However, we will be leaving a gap to turn it through and the easiest place to turn it is on the lining between about there and you want to get the bag all the way through so about there about a hand sort of width so if you just peg up to those sides pin in place to there and do the other sides as well. Trying to keep it nice and in the middle there. Get them as lined up as you can. And then you'll be sewing just in front of that fleece along the seam allowance. And we're going to do exactly the same with the smaller scissors case. Where I've left not much here, I'm going to have to make sure that I do leave a good seam allowance there. So I might just have to bring my line in onto the fleece a little bit, but that, that will be fine. It's better to do that than to have a hole in the bottom of the bag. And then we've got the label coming up here. So you'll want to sew on this side. So that will be in the seam allowance and won't be seen. Okay, and then do the same with a little one. Lining up the seams. You can actually cut these extra bits off now if they're getting in the way. Because we've got the ends sewn in. So the zip's not going to go shooting off. So you can just cut those off. And tidy it up a little bit. Okay, once you've pinned the little ones together as well, you'll be sewing around. And don't forget, you need to leave a gap in the lining on the little one as well. Just that. 
So I've now got this on the machine ready to go and I'm starting off by actually pinning down the zip because this is going to be a thick bit to get through and I just thought I would lie those with the zip curled up just so that I make sure I get that bit there and it is a little bit closer I am on the fleece a little bit um, but I'd rather that than miss the zip so we're going all the way around try and get the corners nice and curved as you go so the camera will stay there minding out for the pins as you go raise it a little bit. There we go. Is that better view? I'm going to do it one handed now. I'm going to need two hands for this bit so let's see if I can show you this bit. So we're going to open the seam And that's the bit that we covered the zip with, the end of the zip. So I'm going to try and just get the stitching just to the edge there so that you don't see the pink lining, hopefully. So I'm going to just take out that pin. And then I'm just going to pin seam allowance has gone quite narrow here so I'm going to purposely try and bring it back in a bit and just keep lining up as we're going. Let's remove the worst part, the bumpy bit and then don't forget we're not going to sew all the way around on the lining because that's where we'll be turning the bag through. So just up to the point there. So when we get there, just secure with a few reverse stitches and then pick up at the next mark, lining up the lining again. tricky to do this with the camera this side. I thought it might help a little bit. sewing right round back to where we started. Checking that you've got both layers still together. So once you've sewn all the way around, just check that you've got both sides in 
all the way around and then take some scissors and just on the curves without cutting into the stitching just give those curves a little snip and that will just help the fabric lie flatter when we turn it round the other way Let's do it on both the outer and inner where it's slightly curved if you want you can get rid of the excess And then we're ready to turn it round the right way. So put your hand in to the gap that you left and find the hole that you've left with the zip open and just very slowly and carefully start to turn the bag the right way round, pushing the lining out and then the actual bag as well. So get in there and push the corners out. You can open the zip a bit more if you need to, to get into this little pointy bit in the corner. And there you can see Zips nice and secure, nice and neat. And just then you've got the final bit, which is just to sew up that little bit of lining. So to do that, you might need to just push that away a little bit. And pull it tight, fold it down, you can press it if it's easier for you with an iron or finger press and then just sew that bit up. You can either do it by hand, a little ladder stitch that's barely visible or you can just do it on the machine which is what I'm going to do. So there we have it, lining stitched up. So then the final step is just to push that lining into the scissors bag. Make sure it's all secure. And there you have it, your finished scissors case. So, ready for your scissors your own very special dressmaker's scissors in their lovely quilted little case. So you'll need to do the same steps with your little one. So it is sewing around, leaving a gap in the lining and then turn it the right way around, sew the gap up and you'll have another little matching scissor case. Hope you've enjoyed making your scissor cases. If you like this video, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos and come back soon. Bye.